Cool. Well, hello, um, everyone. Welcome to the second meeting of Neo Colorado. Uh, this is our second meetup, first one of the year. Uh, pretty excited to talk about today's um, conversation about Neo's path to network decentralization. Uh, but before we do that, I would like to uh, quickly thank Neo News Today, the team. Uh, they really helped me clarify a lot of the information that was going on in here. Um, so thanks to those guys. Uh, thanks to Enterprise, this awesome building that we're in that allows us to do great meetups like this. And thanks to Dan Shields. He's the guy behind the camera who really helps facilitate blockchain community here in Colorado. Um, so Neo centralization, it's an issue that has been talked about with the cryptocurrency since it became a thing. Um, starting back from 2017, the 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 nodes were going to be built and and built out and managed by the Neo Foundation, and this was something that was a part of the white paper and part of the plan. So you have a lot of individuals who might not have bought into necessarily the way that nodes are going to be built and distributed in the Neo network, but they did that so that they could work on uh, improving the consensus protocol if they needed to. So when you look up decentralization and decentralized projects, you're going to find uh, a graphic that looks much like this. And so today we're going to be focusing primarily on the middle graphic, um, the decentralized part. We're not going to be focusing on centralization or distributed networks, really. So this was taken from Vitalik's um, uh, article on decentralization from January 2017. And in that article, he talks about three different types of decentralization, the first being political. So when you want to find out if your blockchain project is politically decentralized, the great question you can ask is, is one group or a small group, uh, a small number of groups responsible for making decisions about the directions of the project? Uh, second is architectural decentralization. And if you want to inquire as to how decentralized your network is, you can ask how many physical computers are, is the system made up of, and how many commuter, computers can the system tolerate uh, breaking down at the same time. And then lastly, uh, there's logical decentralization. And to find out if your network's logically decentralized, you ask yourself, if the system is cut in half, will both the providers and the users be able to fully operate as independent units? So when I was trying to create a comparison for how we can look at other cryptocurrency projects versus NEO, I came up with the two more popular blockchains that we hear about today, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. They operate on a different consensus mechanism, proof of work, whereas NEO operates on delegated Byzantine fault tolerance. So this is kind of comparing apples to oranges, but I really wanted to highlight that there still can be a little bit of a factor of centralization when you're looking at these projects. So Bitcoin's hash rate distribution, uh, the, the top 22.5% is from an unknown uh, group or entity. And then beyond that, the next five uh, mining pools comprise 62% of Bitcoin's hash rate distribution. Uh, and with Ethereum as well, the top five mining pools comprise 78.3% of the total uh, hash rate distribution. And these were taken on January 2nd, 2019. So these are screenshots from both the blockchains. So one of NEO's long-held criticisms is that the project is centralized. It, people can't vote for nodes. And there's a lot of political control that's held by the NEO Foundation. Uh, this was written into the NEO white paper as something that they were planning on doing and that they were going to eventually grow out of and decentralize. And, and, and the reason being that their goal and vision is to build a smart economy, which is removing the barriers between real assets and digital assets, as well as being regulatory compliant. So with that in mind, in January of 2018, this is the CEO of NEO. His name is Da Hong Fei. He said that they were very careful with the way that they decentralized because they wanted to be able to upgrade the, the nodes and if they needed to very quickly. Sometimes we're seeing two upgrades pushed out in one month. And because five of the nodes are owned by Neo Foundation and the other two by trusted parties, they're able to make the updates really quickly. So he said, we're doing decentralization process slowly, gradually, and very carefully. 
Uh, as it stands today, the NEO Foundation has been delegating consensus nodes to reliable and trustworthy parties. These are people who have proven that they have a vested interest in maintaining the integrity of the network. We'll go into a little bit more of that information soon. But also, the reason why they wanted to s focus on centralization and, and maintaining the first core nodes is because as the consensus mechanism, delegated Byzantine fault tolerance was created by the founder of NEO, the, the co-founder, Eric Jang. So they really wanted to be able to work out all the kinks and the details before they started scaling with this. Um, DBFT focuses on the Byzantine generals problem, which is what we see here on the left with the coordinated attack. You have up here with the crown, the general of the generals stating that they're going to attack a city. And if every general is on board with one another, then that's great. They'll achieve success because they'll be attacking from every direction. However, if you have traitorous actors or individuals who don't want to go along with the rest of the consensus, you can really start losing um, the attack power that the original general was going to see. And you can see here that four of the traders decided to do their own thing. So to address this issue, um, delegated Byzantine fault tolerance, which we'll call DBFT for short, was designed and it's comprised of a group of nodes where the majority are delegates and one of the nodes is a speaker who proposes the next block. So the speaker says, you know, this is block X, and then all the other nodes, 66.6% .6 of them, need to reach consensus before they can approve the block and send it on. So to figure out, you know, how many nodes we need in DBFT, we're going to use a little bit of math, where n is the number of nodes. So if you do n minus 1 divided by 3, then you find out what your fault tolerance is for the system. So in our example here, if you have 100 nodes in the network, 100 minus 1 divided by 3 is 33. So you have 33 nodes that can be compromised and the network will still be secure. On the 34th node, that's when you're not going to, you're going to be running into issues where you're not meeting consensus and the block won't be put into the blockchain. So this is just the physical representation of what that looks like. The orange block is the one that states, this is the block with all the transactions that I would like to propose. And then you have the three delegates on the bottom, and all three of them review that. If one of the delegates is dishonest, the other two will say, "No, this is the block that that the speaker the, the block the speaker suggested is something that we agree upon, and we can put that into the chain." So, with this consensus mechanism, 100% transaction finality is um, met after the first confirmation. And this means that the blockchain can't fork because each block will be put continuously in. So you're not going to have to worry about a string, the longest string of blocks, like with some proof of work algorithms. Um, the DBFT utilizes uh, proof of stake like features, such as NEO holders will be able to use their coins to vote on consensus nodes. And doing that, they'll be able to add weight to their vote. And then lastly, Binance announced in December of 2018 that they were going to do their own chain. And the consensus mechanism they're going to use is DBFT. So today as we stand, we have five nodes main maintained by the NEO Foundation. We have two maintained by other groups. And NEO aims to completely decentralize its consensus nodes within 2019. So they will own one node, and then six other entities will own and operate their own. Today, we have City of Zion, which is a developer group that's ingrained in the NEO community that operates a node, and KPN, which is a um, Swiss or a Dutch telecom provider. And then the NEO Foundation owns five nodes as well, still. However, on the testnet network, we're beginning to see what decentralization at the network level is going to look like, where we have NEO owning three of the nodes distributed between two of their entities. Uh, City of Zion operates two testnet nodes, KPN, Swisscom, which is a Swiss, um, a Swiss company as well, and then a new company that's built out of the community called O3 Labs, which we'll go through in a minute. So. When it comes to NEO's decentralization, we're going to take a look at a little bit of its political decentralization, architectural and geographic, as well as um, the amount of coins that the NEO Foundation holds. 
So architecturally speaking, we're still in the phase right now where NEO is reviewing the individuals who are applying to become consensus nodes. So they're looking at well-known commercial projects and community-based projects like O3 Labs, which we'll go through in a minute. And these individuals, entities, communities, they have a strong interest in guaranteeing the security and success of the network. That's because they operate their own projects on top of the NEO blockchain. So that intrinsic sort of drive to ensure that the network is secure is already built into their business model, essentially, is with thought processes. And then after the first seven nodes are decentralized, new consensus nodes will be added in batches of three. And that's to make sure that optimal fault tolerance is, is achieved. With geographic distribution, decentralization, much like we see with a lot of other projects, the more geographically dispersed your node network is, you're, minim you're, you're minimizing your um, dependence on a single nationality or country or service provider. And as you geographically decentralize, you have different nationalities, operating systems, and countries where you start seeing less of a regulatory focus on one particular country. Uh, like we saw in 2017 in September when the Chinese government said they were banning all ICOs and banning all blockchains. There was a concern that neo-centralization with a lot of its nodes being operated in China that the blockchain might get shut down. Um, but as we've seen the network slowly decentralize, we're starting to see its geographic distribution. And today nodes on the main net are operating in Canada, the United States, Europe, Australia, and China. With regards to political decentralization, uh, all NEO holders will essentially one day be able to directly vote for consensus nodes. So as NEO tokens are released and given back to the community or they're burnt um, and the voting function is added into the system, then we're gonna start seeing less and less NEO foundation making political decisions and more and more coin holders. So I want to thank um, I want to thank Neo Economy and Vincent on our team for helping me get some of this information. Um, this is Whale Watch 2019. We're looking at some of the top holder uh, top wallets with the highest amount of Neo. At ranking one and two, we have the actual Neo Foundation that own about 45 million tokens. There are 100 million tokens in total. So as we stand today. January 25th, 2019, NEO effectively owns 45% of all the coins that have been um, minted. And then after the top five, we start seeing a dramatic drop down. We're no longer in uh, wallets that own a million coins. We start going into the hundreds of thousands. Um, but then there's also the Binances of the world that rank number 12 with 400,000 coins. So the more exchanges we start seeing, um, it's going to be interesting to, to follow those wallets and see how much NEO they accumulate. To become a, a NEO node, a consensus node, uh, NEO Global Development released information on how to do this um, in November of 2018. And it basically lists the requirements right here. You need to prove that you have uh, high uptime and high performance of your server management, uh, a technical ability to host, maintain, upgrade, and restore nodes. Uh, then there also needs to be a vested interest and a commitment to the NEO ecosystem, with particular for the first seven nodes. And then these, the, the, the consensus node hosts should be market leaders and in industries that complement other projects in the NEO uh, blockchain ecosystem. Um, with the actual consensus node application process, we can see that the applicant needs to provide personal information about the organization, solutions to various issues that might pop up when running a consensus node, and also what their plans are for whenever there are potential hardware upgrades. Again, tying back, the in, in entities should prove that they have a contribution to and participate within the NEO ecosystem. This is something that a lot of value is being placed on, especially for the first seven nodes that are being decentralized. And then lastly, the consensus node applicants will need to be able to meet minimum hardware requirements. Um, 
So to apply to become a consensus node, the applicant will need to ask to be placed on testnet, um, making sure that they can provide all the information that was asked for on the previous slide. And they can ask to be voted in in three month segments. And we'll go over the, each of the rounds on the next slide. But if the project misses the mark because they weren't able to provide um, proper solutions to a, an issue or two, then they'll be given the opportunity to reapply for the next round, and then uh, they'll automatically be, be added to the next round, and they'll just have to prove that they were able to address the issues that the NEO Foundation had. And then lastly, after an applicant has been operating on testnet for three months, or for six months without any issue, then they can be voted to go into mainnet and then begin decentralizing uh, the consensus node network. So here are the first four rounds uh, that began in November of last year and going to end in November of this year. So the first round is going to end February 28th. We already have had one community project, O3 Labs, submit their name to be a consensus node host. Um, and there might be a few more that list their names in the first round. We may or may not hear about who those potential applicants are until they're a little further down the process. Um, but theoretically, if everything goes according to plan, come May of this year, we could see our first community voted um, consensus node elected. To operate a consensus node, this is something that I've spoke about with individuals in the Colorado blockchain community. They, they ask, what are the, what's the incentive, incentive model for operating a consensus node? Well, today there are very minimal financial rewards. Um, you can choose, up until a few months ago, you were able to send free transactions on the NEO network. Then we had a spam attack and that was changed where people are encouraged to start adding transaction fees to their transactions. And a minimum is 0 .001 gas. Today, a whole gas token is slightly under $2. So you can see if people are opting to pay transaction fees and the minimum is such a minuscule amount of gas, that you might not be necessarily raking in the economic incentives at this point. This is subject to change though. The conversation is ongoing on NEO's Git. Uh, perfect example is pull request 236 that's looking at economic model adjustments as well as adjustments to how consensus nodes are going to be rewarded. Um, and so to highlight that, we looked at the amount of gas that's currently owned by the seven consensus nodes that are operating on the NEO network. So we have City of Zion and KPN at the top. These are the first two non-NEO-oriented consensus nodes that have been elected to and, and been selected by the NEO Foundation to be consensus nodes. Uh, they're entities that are well-trusted by NEO leadership. Um, and so City of Zion launched in June 15th of 2018, and they've, their node has accumulated 120 gas. Um, that's got to be around $250 or less today. It costs a little bit more than that to operate a consensus node per month. So at this point in time, it's really individuals who have a, or, or entities that have a strong vested interest in, in their projects and how it interacts with the NEO blockchain who are really interested in becoming consensus node hosts today. And one of those projects is O3 Labs. Um, they're a developer group that uh, has been around since 2017. Some of the work that they do is they actually work on actual protocol proposals. Um, the NEP standard is similar to like Ethereum's ERC. So like Ethereum ERC20 is a token, NEP5 is a NEO token. Um, so they work on these core proposals. Uh, O3 has built a wallet on mobile and desktop. It serves the NEO-oriented community. They've built a block explorer. They recently enacted coin swapping, so you can choose to uh, swap about eight cryptocurrencies with either NEO ontology or gas without needing to sign up at an exchange. And then they're also working on a dApp store and a really cool project right now where, they're, where O3 Labs is sourcing their API to allow web applications to integrate with the O3 um, uh, API and, ex and, and those web applications can accept gas as payments. So they're really trying to create ways to make 
um, web applications and web browsers be able to use cryptocurrency and in particular um, gas and, and, and NEO. And then this all ties back into these are entities that are interested and, and want to help build the community. So when O3 Labs announced that they were going to be uh, applying to operate a consensus node in, in December of 2018, they said that NEO is a big part of, a big core of their product, that decentralization has been a community issue that they want to work on, and that they submitted all the, nat the information that was asked of them to NEO Global Development, which was the information we went over a few slides ago. So that's O3. That's the first um, community-oriented applicant that is asking to be a consensus node. So we're really beginning to see this start to pick up. And with any luck, come May, June 2019, if these guys didn't run into any hiccups, they could very well be voted on to mainnet, and that would be the first, um, the first among the new batch of individuals and, and companies that are going to decentralize the node network. So looking forward, um, we have Neo DevCon in Seattle next month. It's unfortunate that it's the same weekend as ETH Denver, which is going to be one of the largest Ethereum um, gatherings uh, taking place here in Denver. Um, so we're going to miss that, but there's going to be lots of great development going on that weekend in the United States, so it's going to be awesome. Um, at Neo DevCon, we are going to be looking at things such as protocol quality assurance, um, security token offerings, community development, how we're going to further decentralize all sorts of uh, various topics. And earlier this week, the speaker list was released. Um, and it, there's a slew of, of really great speakers. Um, there's going to be Neo leadership there. And then on top of that, there's going to be individuals from Microsoft, um, Accenture, and lots of other great projects that are oriented um, around the Neo ecosystem. So that's going to be an awesome uh, gathering of, of the minds. Um, so thanks to those who showed up on a Friday night at 6.30 uh, to, to make this happen. Um, Neo Colorado is still new, so we're really trying to build some consistency and show that we want to get individuals in the community involved, and we really just want to show that um, there's a lot of great things happening on this platform, as with other platforms in, in, in the blockchain community. And if you have any questions about anything NEO oriented or NEO News Today oriented, here's my contact information. And for individuals in the room or for anyone who's watching this right now, if you want to stay up to date with what's happening with NEO Colorado, please just sign up at our meetup page, which is meetup.com uh, backslash NEO dash Colorado. And we'll be happy to send you all sorts of great information as it comes along. So thank you very much. And I am happy to take any and all questions right now. Okay, so when you talk about decentralization, um, is it decentralization within a community, like in general, like because there are so many different sources, basically, like they're all, like you know how you in urban planning is like clustered and mm -hmm. centralized and stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it similar to that? Yeah, so when we're talking about decentralization, um, you, when, you, when you think about Bitcoin, you have thousands and thousands of nodes that have all the information of every transaction that ever happened. Mm -hmm. And these are people who, cho who choose to run a node. When you're talking about NEO, you only have seven of those nodes, not thousands and thousands. And NEO owns those nodes that maintains the ledger. So every transaction that's ever occurred, it's, owned, it's, it's operated and ran by a single entity. Well, five-sevenths of it is. Okay. So when we're talking about decentralization, we're giving that power of who verifies all the transactions that have ever happened. We're giving that power to maintain that network to other individuals, other entities. Okay. So NEO itself is slowly releasing the power, the reins, to who's going to be the entities in charge of making sure that that's the case. And then they'll start growing, growing, growing. Uh, maybe not to the point where like Bitcoin and Ethereum have 10,000 nodes, mm -hmm. but I think 1,024 is the most that NEO could ever have. But in this instance, that's what decentralization is referring to. Okay, and what exactly is a node? 
A node is uh, a server. It's a piece of hardware that um, basically maintains the network. So this is, if I own a node, it's going to be very potential, the potential is high that um, I could be this entity in red that says, this is the block that contains all the transactions. And then the other nodes are going to be the, the physical structures, the, the hardware that's stating, yes, either we agree with this or we don't. So you can think of a node as sort of like a, a server or something that's making sure that the network is continuing. To, it, it's providing the actual technical ability for the network to operate. Okay. Yeah. Hey, um, I'm just curious, what, what's the advantage of having a blockchain that doesn't fork? So the advantage of having a blockchain that doesn't fork, uh, NEO states that a lot of these um, advantages are for enterprise scale uh, part projects. These are very large scale projects that are going like that are going to be doing lots and lots of transactions at once. And so, if you're not blocking, then you have a verified chain that you can go back and say the previous block for sure has all these transactions that happened. With Bitcoin, you're having different nodes that are suggesting a chain, and then as time goes on, that chain becomes more and more certain more blocks are added to it, and so they call it the longest chain. So this is what finality does, is it just adds on each transaction after it's approved, so you don't have to have a string of blocks. So it allows for faster transactions per second, and it allows for enterprise level, and enterprises like very large scale customers, it allows for enterprise level customers to be able to be uh, confident that the information that they upload to the blockchain will be immutable, which means it's unchanged, and will remain there. So that's a benefit, yeah. So we're talking a lot about decentralization of this eventually. Um, but I wonder a little bit, like you're saying, right now it is just NEO and the NEO Foundation who is in control and wants to keep control of especially things like updating nodes. So, uh, with other distributed systems that we talk about, it's not necessarily uh, it, that strict, right? The people who are developing this stuff is really more uh, grassroots, right? There is right now this centralization like in Ethereum and Bitcoin, mm -hmm. um, but there's a huge amount of con contributions to that. Do we see any um, outside of the NEO Foundation development of the core itself, and are they accepting of this? Um, I just wonder about that. Yeah, so you have like some developer groups. There's one called City of Zion, another called, they're based in Europe and America. There's New Econo Labs, they're based out of China. You have Neo Research, which is coming out of Latin America right now. You have the, the Neo St. Petersburg Center for Competency, which is out of Russia right now. So you have these individuals who are actually making core contributions to uh, core code and other ancillary kind of important projects, those are community oriented. But what NEO has done to kind of like hold the reins and make sure that the nodes are associated with parties who have a vested interest in making sure that the network is run properly, that's sort of where the centralization is. So you have developer groups from all over the world working on Git, doing pull requests, and working with other groups. Some of these individuals are even being compensated through City of Zion funding. But then you also have the very tight-knit leadership at NEO who's stating we're going to very slowly decentralize our nodes in this way, but other developers can work on, on, the, information, on the code that's in the core as well as other ancillary core projects. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see as things progress in NEO how much they're willing to let go of control. Uh, I worry about that. But I think more pressingly, I wonder, we're talking about this delegated uh, Byzantine fault tolerance. And right now, there really is one central entity that owns and operates this whole thing. How are you actually testing dishonest actors? Because right now, I don't see there is any dishonest actors. Everyone's vetted in the system. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a great question that I'm going to have to add to the FAQ, which is something that I would definitely like looking into. And then there's also the unknown unknowns. Um, there have been times when the network's been shut down uh, because of various factors. There are also times when we just started getting spammed 
and these were things that just popped up that we didn't have an understanding of. Um, but yeah, that's a great question, and I'm gonna have to research that and get back to you. Sounds good. Maybe Thanks. bring it up next time. Yeah. So, with all of these uh, different entities, like the new Econo Labs, I think you mm -hmm. mentioned, O3, mm -hmm. City of Zion, mm -hmm. um, are they all associated with the Neo blockchain? Because how, do we, how can we assure that the consensus will be completely unbiased? Mm. Yeah, so <clears throat> there, so City of Zion, new Econo Labs, uh, Neo Research. These these are these are um, community developer groups that go out and do their own research. First, they show that they're willing to do the work. So, how City of Zion started? They acquired um, Neo documentation, which was mostly in Chinese, and then they just translated it to ten different languages. And they took that upon themselves and then just did it. And eventually, the Neo Foundation was like. Who are these guys? What are they doing? So that's how they started gaining a little bit of recognition. So yeah, they're quite tied to Neo because they're developing the core infrastructure there, and they obviously want to make sure that they make the blockchain better because they probably have subsidiary projects that are working on top of that as well. Um, but then you have O3 Labs, and they're a little bit different. They're not. You could say that these other developer groups are sponsored by NEO, they receive funding to do their research, but O3 Labs is creating products, they're creating something that you and I and everyone in here is going to use, a wallet. They're, gonna, they're creating a block explorer so that we can put in our public key and see how much it, it, you know, coins are on our NEO wallet. So they're doing something a little bit different, they're actually building products that rely on the NEO blockchain which is a little bit different than developer groups who are studying the Neo blockchain and making the code more efficient. These are people who are actually building a business around it and using Neo. So there's a little bit of difference between developer groups and, and groups that are developing on top of the blockchain, but those are the folks that, those are the types of entities that the Neo Foundation is interested in. City of Zion has been around for a long time. They're running a consensus node right now. O3 Labs has been building on top of Neo for a long time, and they have useful products for the community now. That's why they're being um, considered as well. So there's a bit of a separation, but there's also a tie, a tie, a tie to to the Neo Foundation. If you guys don't have any more questions, thank you very much for coming out. It's been a fun Friday evening. Thanks. <laughs>